time for 10 minutes of commercial free current events. This is CNN Student News. Is this legit? Patriot Day is marked every year in September. True, not to be confused with Patriot's Day, which is held in April, Patriot Day is on September 11th of every year. Patriot Day remembers the victims, the first responders, the families affected by the September 11th, 2001 terrorist attacks in the United States. So does the National September 11th Memorial Museum. It opens today in New York, first for the families who were directly affected by the attacks and later for the public. CNN's Kate Baldwin joined Joe Daniels, the museum's president, for an emotional tour of the building. These tridents were from the North Tower. They were recovered in the aftermath of the attacks. We brought them back here and basically built the museum all around them. Nearly 13 years after terrorists destroyed the Twin Towers, killing almost 3,000 people, the 9-11 Memorial Museum is set to open, a commemoration of the day America changed forever. You're not whitewashing it. This is the raw, dirty material. Exactly. I mean, this is the steel that, that bore the attacks. The museum is built almost entirely underground, some 70 feet down. It sits in the precise footprint of the World Trade Center. So this yeah. is exactly where the South Tower started and went up 1,350 feet. A striking display of the sheer scale of the destruction with poignant reminders of the tragedy at every turn. I mean, this, this is unbelievable. This is actually the front of this fire truck. This is the cab. You wouldn't know. Wouldn't know, and it's, it's completely burned out and destroyed. Then there's the retaining wall that remarkably held strong even when the towers fell. When the towers came down, all that debris that was here right in this space um, provided bracing for that wall. And when that debris was clear, there was a big concern that the wall would breach, mm -hmm. would flood lower Manhattan. It could have been so much worse. But this wall held under all of that pressure. Visitors will also walk alongside the survivor stairs. Used by hundreds of people as the buildings are crumbling, um, running from the dust cloud to escape to safety. And uh, it's for all our visitors to understand the story of survival. And likely one of the most emotional stops in the museum. This art installation mimics the blue sky on that fateful morning. Behind it, the still unidentified remains of 9-11 victims. The move met with mixed emotion from their families. A still shocking statistic is that 1,100 uh, family members never got any human remains back to bury, never got to go through the, the ritual of laying their loved ones to rest. It's not a public space at all. Only family members are allowed back behind the wall. Right next door, a room dedicated to the lives of those lost. Adjacent to this is the reflection room, which is so important and why we can't show it and won't show it is because the families get to see it first. Exactly. That room um, is in an area called In Memoriam, and it's a photographic portrait of each and every one of the 2,983 victims. You see pictures, a, a father coaching his son's Little League team, a wedding. You see the lives that were, that were lost that day and not just about how they died, it's who these people were. Throughout the museum, chilling reminders of the day. Handmade flyers for the missing, a cross emerging from the wreckage, everyday items simply left behind. We help through these artifacts and images tell that story of just, it was panic and people were getting out as fast as they could. And it does, it's not just the shoes. It tells the shoes worn by this woman, Linda. I mean, it t it's, you're telling everything about that day. And while the museum is vast, one small exhibit has been the biggest source of controversy. Its focus, the terrorists themselves, including a film criticized for not making a clear enough distinction between Islam and Al Qaeda. There's been a lot of criticism. Why give any time to the terrorists? You know, it's, it's one way to look at it is you don't build a Holocaust museum and not be very clear uh, that the Nazis were the ones who committed those atrocities. Al-Qaeda was a, an extremist terrorist group that, that essentially bastardized that religion for their own purposes. Um, but no one will come through this exhibit and in any way think that we are indicting um, an entire religion, which we in no way are. It seems very appropriate that you end here at the last column. And it's again, goes right back to resiliency, seeing those messages of hope, 
and remembrance on this very tall column that's still standing strong.